you're watching Fried Eyes. Here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech. Alright, now those of you out there who are enjoying this Pro Audio and Home AV platform I run now here on a Friday at Old Mate's Backyard Tech will be aware, I'm an analog recording engineer. Having said that though, I class that as using analog desks and analog equipment, even though I have used HD in the past, as well as digital mag tape. To be brutally honest, I prefer mag tape recording than HD recording. Having said that, my recording style is loosely based on my idol, Bruce Swedian. Unfortunately, he passed away last year, which was a great shock. Now, I did a little bit of creative licensing when I based my style of recording from him. However, one thing I took away from his style of recording is a lack of EQ when recording. In other words, I want to get everything to tape naturally with no colouring of the recording. We've spoken about the three-step process in the recording industry. You record the track, you mix the track, you master the track. Three-step process. What I haven't shown you is actually how I used to do it. So I thought, for this Pro Audio video, I'll show you how I record stuff. Mixing consoles. Monitor and reference speakers. Effects and dynamics. Here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech, it's Pro Audio time. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. You are watching Fridays here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech. Back into Pro Audio for this video and I want to show you guys how I used to record stuff. My method of recording. Now, a bit of background. My method of recording is loosely based on one of my recording analog recording engineer idols. Bruce Swedian, probably one of the world's most famous analog recording engineers. He is the creator of the acoustic recording system, uh, double miking, etc. One thing I, two things I took from him was both the acoustic recording, but also I have never ever coloured the sound when recording. No EQ and almost no dynamics if I can get away with it. Get all the sound of what you're recording onto tape. Now, I have. I, before we get into this, I want to clarify something because I've had a number of comments that I'm not publishing due to language and other forms of abuse. Um, can I just clarify something first? When I'm talking mag tape, I need people to actually get this in their heads. And I'm sorry to be rude about it, but I have clarified this so many times and people still don't get it. Mag tape. Mag tape is not just analog, as in quarter inch, half inch, three quarter inch, one inch, two inch. Mag tape also is what both Tascam and Alesis used. Tascam used high 8, 8 millimeter video tape for the DA38s and 88s, etc. And Alesis with the ADAT used SVHS tapes. Both of those are magnetic. Thus, they still fall under, as far as I'm concerned, mag tape, magnetic tape. So you have ARS, mag tape, analog recording, and you have DTRS, digital tape recording. Both of them use mag tape. The other recording is HD. And we're not meaning high definition, hard disk or hard drive or what have you. Alesis is HD 24. 24 track hard drive recorder, which I believe I've now clarified the new one is SSD. Why I've got no idea. I don't, I, look. I've said this before, I don't get why people can't understand this. In audio, one second is one second. 
access time is not really going to be too different between an SSD and an HDD, especially if the thing's already armed. But anyway, I prefer mag tape. I have had to record to HD in the past. I know why people like it, and that's fine. I don't. I prefer traditional mag tape, analog and DTRS. Now, recording or tracking, whatever you want to call it. The way I used to do it would be to simply mic up, arm tracks, get the tape machine ready, push record. That, that, that's it. Now we've spoken in the past about the recording process and we've nailed it down into three steps. Record it, mix it, master it. Two of those I like, recording and mastering. I hate mixing. <laughs> I've said it before, I used to record stuff and then hand it off to someone else to mix it. Right? When I'm recording, I like to get as close, especially in the analog realm, it's a little bit more tedious in the digital realm, but in the analog realm, I like to get to zero dB VU. Maybe a little over. Especially on analog mag tape, you could drive it plus one, plus two if you wanted to. You try to avoid that, but you could. And then saturate the hell out of the tape if you want. So for this video, I actually want to show you the process I would go through in recording something. Now for the purposes of this, again, I'm going to use a drum sample. I want you to think of this drum sample as being multi-tracked, because I've actually only got a stereo version of it. But I want you to think of it as being drum-tracked, all right? And uh, I'm going to show you how I used to record stuff. And, as always, we'll be using Mixbus 32C-7. All right, funky audio rerouting done. Now, what I want you to do specifically for this, okay, I want you to imagine this is a Harrison 32C from the 70s, okay? And I want you to imagine we're recording to tape. Not to hard disk, okay? So this is actually going to go on to tape, all right? Doesn't matter whether we're talking digital or analog here. We're going out to an external tape machine, all right? Now, as I've said in the, before, my recording style is loosely based on Bruce Swedian, my recording idol, okay? I looked up to him. So, first off, the mix is already zeroed out. All right, so I better turn that off as well because I don't want to be using the compressor or limiter on the master. All right, so the first thing you notice with the EQ, we are not using any type of EQ at all. I refuse to color the sound when I'm recording. Okay, you want to do EQ in your mix down as far as I'm concerned. All right, so. I've marked, what, what we're actually gonna do is I'm gonna record via, I'm gonna bring the signal in via my Yamaha, all right? So think of the Yamaha as the actual source, whereas what I'm actually doing is coming off Winamp with a drum track, but I want you to think of the Yamaha as the source of the audio, and I want you to think of Mixbus as a traditional 1970s legendary Harrison 32C, all right? No EQ. We're not going out to the mix buses. And you'll note, no dynamics on either channel. All right? So, first thing we need to do, check volumes. But, we're actually gonna record this as though it was going to tape, all right? So we're gonna bring up our, and we're gonna bring up our ins. All right, now what this is gonna do with mix buses is it's gonna record it from the output of my O2R. But the O2R is the drum kit, okay? So just imagine my O2R is the actual drum kit. Okay, so we want to record what's coming into the mixer. We don't want to record what's coming off Winamp, all right? So it's a drum loop. So the first thing we want to do, you'll notice that I haven't, I, I struggle with the audio rerouting without the lack of a proper 16 or 32 channel ADDAC to isolate the channels. It's very hard for me to do this 
in a in a proper way okay and I don't have the equipment to do it either so but this will give you the general idea you'll also note I'm not panning anything I am not panning when you're actually recording something okay in a mixer you don't pan you only start panning out your channels when you're going from multi-track to two-track stereo aka when you're mixing everything down when you're mixing the track because when you're recording to mag table hd it's mono by default okay you as a recording engineer may not be the person mixing the track you may just be recording it and then it's going out to another studio to be mixed right it could be going out to a different re recording studio for mixing because you've got a full schedule of recording so you've got to record it and then send it off to another studio for mix down you don't want to have to sit there constantly and and, and write down you know channel one's panned left channel two's panned right channel four is panned sent you know 45 degrees off center left channel sevens panned 90 degrees center right no you don't you don't do that when you're recording you pan you leave in the middle exhibit a you're on it all right now i've got to do this a little funkily um but what i want you to imagine is down here somewhere is zero db just for the purposes of this video it's not but I just want you to imagine, because of the way I've got a thing set up here, I want you to imagine that down in here is about 0 dB. For argument's sake, 0 dB FS. Okay? So, what we want to do is get the, uh, get the drummer to rehearse what he's going to play. Now, we're not going to record, we just want him to rehearse, check our levels. So, let's do that now. We're a little low. Still a little low. Let's bring the gain up a bit. say that zero the drummer's been rehearsing okay got your levels right we've trimmed it out we've gained it up we were at zero db on the on the faders so we're now ready to record the track or, or tracks so imagine this is say let me just maximize that imagine say you've got eight channels of drums all right, so just imagine eight channels of drums and we can break down the hi-hat, the kick drum, the overheads, the cymbals, cowbell, whatever, into those eight channels, all right? I can't do that this way, but you'll get the gist. So the drum is now rehearsed. I'm sitting here in front of the mixer. I've got the remote for the tape machine ready to go, all right? So what I have done in the past, I've done about a three-second... Um, uh pre-roll okay and so that's obviously we're set 30 frames a second okay that's standard audio frame rate 30 frames a second uh that was set up by the simpty mob as i call them i don't always agree with everything they've set up but anyway so now what we do we've got the mixer set we've got our input set no eq no dynamics nothing i want to get sound to tape all right so i'm ready to go and i sit at the window and i point at the drummer and i say play i 
except it didn't record. <laughs> Why did it not record? Oh, I haven't armed the tracks. <laughs> Oops. So we arm the tracks, right? Because on a mixer, you'll have a, a, a thing there to arm your tracks up, all right? Or turn your tracks on, all right? So we've got the tracks all armed, the machine's armed, we're ready to record, all right? I'll just rewind the sample, all right? So again, I do about a three second pre-roll, and then what you would do is you cue the drummer to start playing. So you'd be looking through the, the window and you point at the drummer and just go start, all right? So we'll get this ready, we'll get the mixer up, all right, we'll get the mixer up. Go for a three second and you're ready. Oops, drummer's made a mistake. He's missed a beat. All right, he, he's buggered the, 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 the drum rhythm up okay in the digital realm it's very easy because you just delete that 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 waveform the analog realm was a little bit more tedious right the analog realm you could punch into where he's stuffed up or as i have done with dtrs digital mag tape re-record it just go straight over the top all right so we'll redo it all right so again what we'll do is rewind the tape. So we've rewound the tape back to zero, 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 zero. All right, we'll delete all that. Tracks are all still armed. Okay. We will push, we'll get the thing ready to go. And I will just bring Winamp into an area where I can actually control it. So again, the O2R is actually the drum kit. Just imagine that and we have eight channels of drums, okay? All right, so we'll get ready with a pre-roll. We'll do a three second, we'll do a three second um, pre-roll and then I'll cue the drummer. Stopped it a little early, but it doesn't matter. So now imagine that is a rock song or a pop song or a punk song at about, uh, I don't know, three and a half minutes. Or three minutes, 30 seconds, 18 frames, all right? Or oh, sorry, three minutes, 29 seconds, 25 frames, all right? And we'll just take that back to minutes and seconds and what do we got there 29 761 all right that's how i used to record all right and at the same time i'd be doing the drums i'd probably do the bass guitar as well the bed tracks all right so your bass guitar and your drum kit your bed tracks other times you might be able to record the whole band at once so you'd have the whole band in the studio and you either have the lead singer with the band or you might have the lead singer off in a vocal booth or you may have him partitioned in the live space so he's still with the band but he's in a partitioned area you know like a three-sided square or half a hexagon three quarters of a hexagon and so he's he's sort of baffled in but he's still in big live space so that's how i used to record and you note no eq no dynamics, the sound has not been colored while I've recorded. Now, whether you do that drums and bass in a nice, bright, live room and get that really nice, reflective sound off the drum kit, um, John Bonham um, used to do that on a number of his tracks that just record him in a wide open room, 
and they wouldn't have to worry about reverb then. Or do you put a, the, the drum kit into a dead room, a sonically dead room, so that it, it, it there's no reflective surfaces, the, the sound in the room, it's a dead sound, okay? It's a very well insulated dead room, no sonics in it at all, okay? That's up to you and or the producer or the band or whatever of how they want the drum kit to sound initially in the recording, all right? Um, I must say, having come back to pro audio and recording and that, um, I think it was Paul Turner said, my knowledge will just start to come back again. And it is. It's, it's coming back in, in waves, I've got to tell you. So that's how I used to record. All right. And again, if I turn this off, no EQ. So what came from the drum kit went to tape. And I can prove it. I can prove it, all right? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, what have I done there? Uh, ah, I know what I've done there. Hang on. Let me disarm the mic and I'll be back. Okay, so we're now back in play mode, all right? And so you're going to hear, not mix bus, EQ, you're going to hear the track as it was recorded, okay? So what went in is what comes out. Right, this is this is where I've had arguments with people in the past about my love of analog recording. We all know these days that recording is very digital. You listen to a lot of pop music now; a lot of it's recorded in MIDI. A lot of it's actually made in like Cubase and Reason and Logic of that. Okay, there's very little real instrumentation. Rock there is, but poppy garbage that's out today. Frankly, it, it's basically MIDI driven. Okay? Programmer. And I'm not telling you, I know what's going to happen to me saying, well, what do you mean? They're not writing lines of codes. Programming music. Okay? Using Cubase, using MIDI, using samples and loops and MIDI instruments. Okay? My style of recording really only happens in rock, possibly metal. Although you're still recording to to a hard drive record, we use in some cases they're still using analog mixes. Foo Fighters record in analog. I think Metallica still records in, in, in through an analog desk. Butch Vig, very famous recording engineer, drummer for Garbage, right? Analog desk recorded it into Pro Tools. Um, so. Even though I'm an analog recording engineer and I prefer to record to external mag tape, the theory behind recording is still there, right? So I never, ever, you can see the EQs are off, right? So there's no effects. My dear mate, who we all know, MV5, he's of the same opinion. If you're going to record, you record with nothing. Right? If you have to use a mic preamp on a condenser mic, say something like a, I don't know, U47 or U87 from Neumann, all right, which is phantom powered, it's a 48 volt mic, and that's 48 VDC, by the way. Um, that's not coloring the sound. All right? Some condenser mics, you need a preamp because even increasing the gain on the channel you're still not going to hear them. So you use a mic preamp to boost it. Okay. Um, and if you can, you use an Avalon with a vacuum tube in it to warm everything up. So that's how I used to record, guys. No coloring, no nothing. Doing it that way meant if I'm mixing the track, which, as I've said, I hate mixing, I'm not worried about stuffing up EQ or anything like that from the recording. 
if I've recorded, like when I did some band's demos, I recorded them, I wasn't mixing them. Someone else was doing the mix, okay? I just had to record the tracks. That's all I had to do was just record the tracks and note the time code of each track. And what I would often get them to do would be to rehearse the track a few times before we record the track. All right. Um, and then I'd just make a time code of where the tracks are for the mix down engineer. All right. The other thing that I would do, and a lot of engineers do this as well, is at the end of your session, at the end of your session, I've never spoken about this, at the end of the session, you zero out the desk. Okay? I will explain zeroing out the desk in a later video, but you would zero out the desk because you don't know who's coming in next. If it's you, okay, fine. If it's a different sound engineer, they want to start with a clean slate, and I'll explain zeroing out the desk in a later video. So there we go. How I used to record. Stick around. We'll see what else crops up. Have a good one. This has been an Old Mate's Backyard Tech presentation.